Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth, the United Kingdom, and today I'm going to do an analysis, analysis of a buckling of a thin wall cone, including geometrical and material nonlinearity. So we start first with preferences. We we'll begin structural, structural problem. Press OK. We we'll pick on the preprocess. So we we'll pick element type, add element, delete. I'm going to add a shell 93. We're using ANSYS 11. We press apply there. And we've got one there. And we press another one there. And we press OK. And we've got three there. We don't want three, so we delete that one. So we've got shell type 1 will be for the wall of the cone, which is 1.844 millimeters. Type 2 will be for the end disc cap, which will be 10 times that thickness which would be 18.4 and we close this and we pick, put the thicknesses in now we pick on real constant add and delete and we put add okay and we put in there the thickness of the conical part which will be 1.844 millimeters and we okay that we then put add again and we pick on type 2 and we press OK, and this time we'll put the thickness, which is 10 times that, which will be 18.4 millimeters. And we OK that, and we'll come out of that. So to set 1 is for is the thickness of the, the cone, and set 2 is the thickness of the end disc cap. Material properties, we pick on material models, we pick on structural, we pick on linear, we pick on elastic, isotropic. And we put in the Young's modulus, which is 1.83 times 10 to the fifth, 1.83 E5 megapascals. The pass on ratio is 0.28, so we put that in there, and we OK that. We've then got to pick the nonlinear part of it, so we've got nonlinear, inelastic, rate independent, and we pick this, we take this down here a bit, we've got isotropic, mesis plasticity, bilinear, and we put in the yield stress of this material, which is 205.9 megapascals, and then for the tangent modulus, but it will be 100 of the Young's modulus, so it will be 1.83 times 10, which is E, 1.83 e3 megapascal 1.83 times 10 to the 3 megapascal we'll okay that and we've done that fine and we can now pick on modeling so we picked on modeling we now pick on create we pick on volumes, we pick on cone, we pick on cone by dimensions, and we put the dimensions of the cone here, the first thing we put there, at the bottom radius, which is 100.06 millimeters, then we put the top radius, which is 75.23 millimeters, and then we put the Z coordinates. It's an upright cone. The, the 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 origin is zero, and the height of it is um, 100.09. To put 100.09. Get that right. 100.09, and it's swept between an angle of 0 and 30 degrees. So we do that, and we should draw a cone there, and our cone's drawn, that's fine. So we pick on plot controls, and we pick on pan zoom rotate, and we pick on uh, ISO. We draw it like that. And now we're going to mesh it. So we pick on uh, meshing, and we pick on mesh tool. And we get our mesh tool thing there. So we want to uh, 
change volumes to areas because we are uh, the elements are in areas, not volumes. We pick on set here, and that says that the this uh, the thickness of this element is going to be type one, which is 1.84, which is the which is uh, the cylinder wall, a cone wall. I beg your pardon. So we pick on mesh here, and we pick on there and there, and we press. apply and we've meshed that. Now we're not going to mesh the small end so we pick plot controls and put pan zoom rotate and we'll put back and we'll get rid of this once we've done that. We'll close this and I'm going to mesh the flat end there so I pick on set again and it says type 1 there, so we change it to type 2, which means the thickness of this bit, this mesh is going to be 18.4 millimeters. And we press mesh, and we go here. Now that says that it's picked the larger area, we want the small area. So we pick on next, we press on OK, and we press OK here, and we've meshed it. So now we could. Uh, Press plot control, span, zoom, rotate, and we're going to put the boundary conditions on. So we turn that to right, we pick on solution, define loads, apply, structural, displacement, on nodes, we box, press that box there, and we're going to restrain the right end here completely because that's fixed. At the left end, we've got a thick a thick plate, so we don't have to worry about that. So we press, uh, we box this in now, like that. We've got to be careful we don't go too far over to the left, or we'll restrain some midnight no mid side nodes. So we put all degrees of freedom. It's completely and totally fixed. It's completely fixed there. So that's fixed. Remember, we haven't got to fix the left end because the left end has got um, a thick plate. So we pick pressure, and we pick on nodes. We put box. And the pressure we're going to put is lateral, so we must go slightly to the right of this, of the small end. And we box that in there. Now remember, the buckling pressure of this vessel was about 14 megapascals. So we're going to use about twice that buckling, that pressure for the non linear analysis. So we do that there. And we put minus 20. And we put minus 20. 20. And the minus is because it's external. And press OK, and that's restrained that fi that's fine. So we've done all that, and now we've got to uh, uh, pick on. And uh, we've got to do the analysis, which is a static analysis. We analysis type, solution controls, and we change this to a large displacement, and we change this to calculate the pressure stress effects, and we've got pro program chosen is going to be on. The number of sub steps is going to be um, 20. The number, the maximum number of sub steps is going to be a thousand, and the minimum number of sub steps is going to be one. And then we pick on all solutions. Then we've got to be careful with this bit. We've got to write every step, and this is not easy to find. So we the write every sub step. So we've done that, and that's fine. So we've got nonlinear. We pick on program chosen, which should be on, and then we pick on the max maximum number of steps, which is a thousand. That's fine. And then we uh, close this. We close this, and we've got to run it now. We set it up to run to a, a geometrical material non-area step-by-step -step method. So we look for uh, um, solve. Solve count LS LS stands for load step, and we start this, and the way it goes, it doesn't like the the elements at the end where, where the plate was, but we don't worry about that. We do that that. Now it's doing it. It's doing the loading solution. It'll take a few minutes to do this, so I'm going to switch my camcorder off. It's done it now, and it's given us a warning that uh, it doesn't like the shape of the elements and things like that. 
but that's fine because um, that's what we, we, we it's, it's the right gooey mess. So pick on this. So we read result. We put the general post processor. We read results. We pick on the last set, and we put plot results, and we put deform shape, deform shape only, and there we are. We've got a right gooey mess there, and that's fine. Now we've got to the time post processing, the the the, the time the history of it. Pardon the history of it. So we got the time history post processor. We pick on that, and we pick on add this. We got degree of free resolution, x component. And we press OK, and then we um, we take this away there, and we put this. We're looking for a point which is collapsed, so we pick on a point there, and we press OK, and uh, we press OK here, and then we call this back. We pull this back here. And we pick on the graph data, and it's done it. We go back like that, and it's collapsed, and it's collapsed at point two of the pressure. The vertical axis is the displacement, the horizontal axis is the pressure factor. The pressure factor is point two, so we multiply point two by thirty. We multiply point two by thirty, so we get six megapascals. The plastic collapse pressure. And the experimental one was six megapascals, so that's fine. So we multiply 0.2 by 30, which is what we assume for the pressure in the first place. And 0.2 times 30 is six megapascals, and we've done that. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to make a correction to what I just said. I said we assumed 30 megapascals for the pressure, but we didn't. We assumed 20 megapascals, so it's 0.2 times 20 megapascals, which is 4 megapascals with our, with our theory, which agrees exactly with the experimental results of 4 megapascals. So it wasn't 6 megapascals, it was 4 megapascals, and we are dead right.